Hey guys, just wanted to throw this out up top here that I'm not in this episode very much. I know, we're all very sad about it. But uh, mostly this is just about past Ryan living the dream and uh, experiencing just the joy of being around the Orbiter Enterprise. Um, I interject a couple of times here and there, but mostly it's just that, so enjoy. Not far now. We're almost there. Warning, honking. Guys, honking in New York is an art form. I have discovered there are many different kinds of honks from, hey guy, the light just turned green 12 milliseconds ago to, oh, I just want to say hi to, uh, just, uh, hey pedestrian, turn and left. Also though, very, uh, uh, that's not the word I want to use. Um, courteous. There we go. Two pedestrians. Like you can just walk. You can straight up jaywalk across a, a, a big hand on the signal, and they will they will they will stop for you, which is pretty. I mean, guys, New Yorkers are really nice. They've all been really nice. Like I've noticed people proactively helping others with directions. This city's straight up great. Okay, you guys, this is what I've been the most excited about. The Space Shuttle Pavilion. We get to go see Enterprise. Yeah, they named the prototype Space Shuttle Enterprise. How much do I love it all? I love it all of the much. Five days before I was born. Oh my god, I love this so much. Oh, a shuttlecraft from the Enterprise from Star Trek, NCC 1701. That's the original Enterprise from the Star Trek show. Enterprise was the prototype orbiter built in 1976. Um, the interesting thing is that she. Uh, was built with no engines. She was never intended for space flight. Like, I'll take a look and see over here. Um, yeah, she has no engines. She was launched from a Boeing 747, and she was intended for... Um, she also has no heat shield, so she was built for um, atmosphere test flighting... Uh, flighting? Atmosphere test flights um, and landing capability. So where her engines would be is just this big old cone. Um, but she was considered for uh, fitting um, whenever they were building some more of the shuttles, uh, but they built Challenger instead because it proved cheaper. And then whenever Challenger, the disaster happened, uh, they considered her for a retrofit to make her flight worthy, but then they built Endeavor. So she never flew outside of the atmosphere. Just FYI, the incredible heat that is experienced upon re-entry uh, a misconception is that a lot of it is from friction with the air, but that's not actually true. About 20% of it is from friction of the air, but the air is so thin up there that it's fairly negligible. The actual heat comes from uh, the spacecraft that's coming back in is moving so fast at hypersonic speeds that it compresses the air in front of it. And uh, that air gets denser and denser, and it basically creates like a hypersonic boom where uh, that pocket in front of the spacecraft heats to a plasma of 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So, I mean, these, uh, the material that the, the orbiter's uh, heat shield tiles are, wow, I'm having a hard time getting that out. Take two. The material that the heat shield tiles are made out of is so heat efficient that um, you can actually, you know what? Watch this. Um, material that we use. Now these have been in here at 2200 degrees per hour, so you'll see they're blazing, blazing hot. Now most things if you put in an oven, like if you put a frozen pizza in, it would, it would disintegrate after a couple minutes. But these things have been in there hours. If you put in metal, it may, if, it, if the metal did not melt, at least it would conduct the heat and keep the heat for so long that you couldn't get near it, well, you know, within hours. Well, look at that. And you can take this off. It, 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 it anticipates the heat so quickly that you can actually pick these up with a glowing molten in the middle. Uh, that is insane. 
We did that. We built that. Mm. Mm. Well, humans did. I wasn't involved. Um, I'm never involved. It's a man keeping me down. I hate you, man. It's a man against me. Even though she never flew in space, uh, Enterprise, originally her name, she was built in 1976, and originally her name was going to be Constitution because of the Bicentennial. But over 400,000 Star Trek fans wrote in suggesting the name Enterprise. And President Gerald Ford changed her name to Enterprise. That, I mean... <laughs> That makes me ridiculous. That's so awesome that that happened. Uh, sometimes life's pretty cool. Um, oh, quick thing, like technically, I know this is really nitpicky, but technically, um, this is not the space shuttle. Uh, the space shuttle is a combination of the two solid rocket boosters plus the external tank and the orbiter, which is what she is. So this is the orbiter. Um, when combined with the rocket boosters and the external tank, that's the space shuttle, and also NASA refers to it as the stack, which I love because jargon. The shuttle program was ultimately scuttled just because it proved to be not as much of a money saver as they had hoped to have a semi-reusable um, orbiter and uh, the I mean the solid rocket boosters were reused lots and lots like 43 times I think ultimately um, but it just proved to be too expensive and not as um, efficient as they'd hoped it would be so in 2012 if I'm not mistaken that's whenever the last shuttle launch or the last shuttle um, mission occurred and it was kind of sad I mean right now we don't have we have to hitch rides on the Soyuz we don't have we don't have our own method of getting up there. The Orion spacecraft um, uh, rockets are still being built. I mean, they haven't even reached that phase yet. Um, we don't have a heavy lift rocket. I mean, the one that took uh, Apollo to the moon, that could lift 150 tons. Uh, I think our heaviest lift into low Earth orbit is something like 100 tons. So we still couldn't even get to the moon if we wanted to right now. We wouldn't have the power. Um, you know, I'm hopeful because it seems like that a lot of people are really enjoying. Um, uh, there seems to be a revitali revitalization in, in hopes for space and like the private sector, like um, uh, SpaceX. I mean, they do the launches up to the ISS to refuel, uh, not refuel, but uh, re resupply um, with their Dragon rocket. Um, but you know, I'm I I'm going to space before I die. It's happening. This is the Soyuz TMA-6 module, and this is currently what our astronauts use to get up to the ISS, to get up into space. Um, and they say actually that the Soyuz is a much um, calmer, much less rough flight than aboard the shuttle, uh, because the solid rocket boosters are a very rough ride. Um, but it, again, can only carry three, whereas the shuttle could carry five to seven up to 11 in an emergency situation. Um, and it could also lift a lot more tonnage than the Soyuz can. But, um, it's, I mean, the fact that we have this kind of relationship uh, with the, uh, the cosmonauts, um, despite the fact that the United States and Russia don't get along so well, is kind of testament to how important spaceflight is to these scientists. I mean, I don't think it's any coincidence that everybody who goes up comes back and says, they come back changed. They say, looking, it sounds goofy, but literally looking down on the earth and seeing it from that vantage point makes you realize how interconnected we really all are and how much of a one species and a tiny little dot we all are and have to take care of each other. I don't know. I find that hopeful oh man guys that spacecraft that is for three people three people are in that spacecraft for three days on their way to the ISS 
The living quarters inside that spacecraft are 8.2 feet cubed, approximately. That's 8 feet by 8 feet by 8 feet for three people for three days. And this is why astronauts, cosmonauts, any other space travelers have to be calm, reasonable, adult human beings. We can learn a lot from that. Editorial over. But also, I think in the interim, it'll get us to that place where, you know, we can be what, in our best minds and hearts, n hope or know that we, as a species, can be the best part of us. That's what space means to me. Also, we gotta get other colonies because as uh, Vonnegut, no, not Vonnegut, uh, Heinlein? I think it was Heinlein said, uh, the Earth is just too small a uh, basket to put all our eggs in. We gotta get off the world, guys, because one meteor, bleh, Look at this. Oh my god, it's the Galileo shuttlecraft from the original Star Trek. I... <laughs> you... come on. Ugh. This is what I want my bedroom to look like. There were six orbiters that were built, um, Enterprise obviously never having fly flown in space, but the other five were Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavor. I could seriously probably spend all day here just staring at Enterprise. Just being this close to NASA history is humbling. Commander Jet, this is Houston. You uh, go for flight. Roger, Houston. Commander Jet, uh, go for flight. Please like, comment, and subscribe.